What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number two of On Deck Podcast, brought to you by Brutus. Who you guys, you guys can kind of see my Drago shirt a little bit. People give me such a hard time with this Drago shirt. I, I think it's a fantastic T-shirt, despite the fact that he was a steroid-using communist. Um, so today's show, here's what we got for you. This is gonna be a lot of fun. We have uh, Luke Pletcher, number one ranked Ohio State Buckeye, who, in my opinion, is having a fantastic senior season, especially. You know, when you compare it to, he, he, you know, he's had a, a fourth and fifth place finish at the NCAA championship, but he hasn't been like that number one guy. And this year, he's definitely that number one guy. He's coming off a win over number four, Tristan Moran. Um, he's coming up against number three, Max Buren. Then he wrestles number five, Mitch McKee. Then he wrestles number six, Chad Red. Then he wrestles number two, Nick Lee. Oh, my God, it's going to be a heck, of a heck of a run for him. So I'm going to ask him about that. I'm going to ask him about growing up in Windsor, Pennsylvania with a whole bunch of studs. Uh, we are also going to talk to Tamira Mensa. And Sarah Hildebrand, who just got back. Well, Tamir is actually still in Italy, so we moved our time around a little bit to fit her schedule. Uh, she took second place at the Matteo Pellicone. Sarah is back in Colorado already because she, uh, she's she got a wrestle-off coming up against Whitney Condor to see who goes to Pan Ams. So we'll be talking to both of them on the show. I think that's pretty exciting. So Sarah, if you guys don't know, she won the Matteo Pellicone. She looked really good. She beat last year's world silver medalist. Um, and then Tamira actually kind of had a speed bump. She was winning eight, nothing in the finals. Uh, and she came up a little bit sh- short against, uh, uh, Zhu from China who, and so she lost that match eight to eight. So we'll, we'll catch up with her about that. I do believe it is the last time, uh, both of these ladies will be competing prior to the world team trials. Oh wait, I take the to Olympic team trials. I take that back because I do believe that. Sarah is going to be wrestling at the Pan Championship. So let's give Sarah a call uh, first. All right, guys, we got Sarah here drinking some delicious coffee. It looks like it looks like you have a UFC shirt. Is that a UFC? No, it's I. I'm oh, my it's I my shirt. Okay, fantastic. We're Brutus. I love it. Three days in. Oh, Three jeez. Days in, <laughs> oh, are, are are you a UFC fan by any chance? Uh, kinda, yeah. Kinda. We'll go somewhere in the middle. What's the chances yeah. you ever fight someone in a cage? None. Zero. <laughs> zero. We're talking totally zero or like kind of zero? Okay, I guess it's kind of zero, but <laughs> definitely closer to zero than 100. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Um, okay, Sarah, we're, we're, uh, I, I told everyone already you won the Mateo Pelicone. You looked really good. But I guess the first question is um, 50 kilograms. That's the first time for you there in a, in a long time, correct? Yeah, since I was, uh, gosh, uh, junior in high school. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so many, 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 it was many years ago. Uh, yeah. So I guess what went into the decision to go down, and then how did it feel? Yeah. So um, there are a couple things. I was sitting light for fifty three, uh, walking around at about fifty two. So they, you know, were kind of like you need to lose the two kilos or put on two kilos. And then um, we were also kind of just trying to put together what we thought could be the strongest possible Olympic team. Okay. And uh, that kind of looked at me coming down to 50 and Jakara uh, going into 53. And kind of we could spread out those world medalists amongst the team. So, um, so Jaka- but Jakara was up at 55, but that is not an Olympic weight, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. So, so she had to decide if she wanted to go up or down. And so I think all of that played into her decision as well. So she's coming down. She is. Has she been at that weight class in a long time or no? She has not. I don't remember the last time. I'm sure the same story with me, like when we were younger. So, um, yeah, she'll have to make that on February 8th. That'll be her first time. Okay, yeah. I mean, so when you look at the girls' squad, now we're kind of getting off track. But when you look at the girls' squad, you guys – have the potential to have, uh, I think, either a silver or gold medal at almost every single weight, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you've yeah, been, that was yeah, you, you, plan. Sorry, so you've got a silver. Um, Jakara's got a gold, or possibly mm-hmm. Helen also has a gold. 57. Um, oh, shoot. Allie has a silver. Or, yeah. Well, actually, Helen will be up at 57. Okay, Helen's going up. Yeah, so that's also there. Um, 62, you have Mallory with a bronze and then Kayla Miracle, who's, uh, multiple, yep. like U23 worlds and stuff. Yep. And then yeah. what's 68 to Tamara, Mara, champ, and world then, champ. Adeline, yeah, world champ. Adeline. So, so damn, that's, that's a pretty stacked that's lineup. Nice. 
Okay, so uh, tell us about Matteo Pellicone. Uh, I thought you looked really good. The match with Victoria Anthony was that was kind of bonkers. I mean, you guys were all over the place for six minutes. It really was. I mean, it was really action packed, back and forth. Um, you even got thrown, and then the second time, you know, you came back and countered the head throw when she tried it the second time. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you think about that match? That match was was bonkers. Um, you know, I made a lot of mistakes, but I enjoyed the fact that it was entertaining. You know, yeah, it, was, uh-huh. it was fun for us. It was fun for the people watching. Um, I think it was received well. So that's, you know, that's always really good. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think there's, it was sloppy. I think the whole weekend there was a lot of sloppy wrestling, but at the end of the day, I felt like I was giving so much effort. Like I was mm-hmm. so tired because I was really just going out there. I scrapped the technique and it was just all about like yeah. giving it my full effort. So, okay. And so Victoria's been, uh, I don't believe she's ever been on the team, right? But she's been someone who's been really close. I know she lost in final X to Whitney Connor last year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that I guess that kind of gives you a feel of where you stand at 50. And now you have the wrestle off against Whitney Connor, who's been, she's been the world team representative the last two years, although she has not had this, the success at the world level, right? She's been 0-1 the last two world championships. Um, how do you feel going to that matchup? Are you guys friendly? I mean, obviously, you guys have been on two consecutive world teams together, so there has to be some type of relationship there, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, with all the 50 kilos, it's been an adjustment because they've been my training partners for so yeah. long, and now they're my competitors. So, um, so yeah, definitely close with Whitney. Um, you know, we've also wrestled each other a bunch in the room and in practices, so that's an element as well, you know, we we trained through our weaknesses together. We're, mm-hmm. We know each other's strengths. So, But I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really confident, especially walking off um, that win just a couple of days ago. So, uh, yeah, I, I really can't wait. I feel I'm really enjoying wrestling right now. Awesome. Um, okay, in the finals, Mateo Pelicone, you wrestled the World Silver, Me- Silver Medals from last year, right? And yes. Is it, I, don't know, I, I feel like I'm going to say the F word. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say your last? You, you say it. Vuk. Go. Vuk. It's Vuk. Okay. Okay. Vuk. <laughs> um, so you wrestled Vuk. And, and, you know, tough, scrappy match the whole way through. You come on top with how, how many seconds left? O- only a couple seconds left. Yeah, um, two or three to get the match. So I give us your feelings on that one because I, I thought that was a really awesome match. Also, yeah, it was also another really entertaining match. I feel like um, I don't think the score reflected how in control I kind of felt in that match. I felt yeah. I was the one, you know, most aggressive. I was in on leg attacks multiple times, mm-hmm. uh, just couldn't come up with a finish. And it was only a matter of time that I actually did get the finish. And hope, thankfully, it was within the six minutes allotted to us. Uh, and, you know, just right there at the buzzer. So, uh, but I, I really did feel a lot more in control that match. And I'd be interested to see how it goes, you know, next time we wrestle each other. Cool. Okay, so so give us the rundown. Um, uh, we kind of alluded to earlier. You wrestle off Whitney Condor, and that is for now. There's two Pan Ams. This always confuses people. It even confuses me. There's multiple Pan Ams. Yeah. So is this for both of them? Are you going to compete in both of them, or is it for one or the other, or what is it for? So technically, it would give me the choice for both of them. Okay. Um, I won't be competing in both of them. They're a week apart. They're a week apart. Location. It's so yeah. dumb. It's so dumb. I don't know why they don't combine yes, it. Yes. Um, but the one before the qualifier is technically a ranking tournament. Yes. And, you know, it could help maybe with my seating at the qualifier. But I think I'll already be the highest seating just from the ranking tournament last uh-huh. weekend. So that's, you know, I'm really just going to be focused on the qualifier, um, which obviously qualifies. Top two qualifies our way for the Olympics. So because uh, females have only... You guys have 76 is qualified um, and, and 68, and that's it, right? That's it. That's yeah, it. So it'll be a big weekend. Because Jakara was at a non, non-Olympic weight. Um, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's a big weekend for you guys for sure. Okay, so you have the wrestle-off, you have the Pan Ams, and then I'm guessing the next thing is obviously Olympic trials. There's, there's nothing else you're worried about in the middle there or focused on? Yeah, no, that's it. Uh, once a month I'm competing all the way through trials, and, and if I went, if I – Play stop two at the qualifier for Pan Ams. I'll automatically be in the finals of Olympic trials. So that the is the final. Oh, the finals are the number one seed. The finals. Really? Is that different for women and men? Because I thought the yeah because the men yeah, are just the number different. one seed, right? 
Who is? If if you if you're a male male freestyle at least I don't know what the Greco rules are male freestyle if you win if you qualified the United States for the Olympics at yeah. the Pan Ams you then become the number one seed from my understanding. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I know it's different um, for me, male and females. Mm-hmm. I know. I think the only people sitting out would be like Jordan, like people who want medal yep, that medal medal last year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think if they qualify the way they're just in the finals, like I, yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. So you could skip all the way to, if you if you qualify the country at Pan Ams, you skip all the way to the finals of the Olympic team trials. Yes. Okay. Wow. F- fantastic. Um, okay. What what else you got for us, Andy? Where's your cat at? I know. I don't. Well, we just fed him. Okay, and this is how we feed him. We have these plastic mice, and we <sighs> pil- fill them with food and hide them all around the house, and then he hunts for them. So he's hunting right. That's now. kind of uh. Uh, I feel like that's kind of sadistic or something. I mean, like, no. Why would well, you just put the food in a bowl? Because, well, one, he just eats it in like seven seconds. Okay. Two, it was supposed to help with like. So the, wait, so wait, I like, let aggressive. me. You're you're trying to get him to like get more exercise or something? Is that the problem? yes? Okay, and right. it helps with aggression, but I think it made him more aggressive. So you you <laughs> want a more aggressive cat, or it makes him less aggressive? It was supposed to make him less aggressive, but he's pretty aggressive, I feel like. Well, yeah, I would think that, that like, the process of hunting and killing would, would <laughs> tend to make you more uh, more aggressive rather than less aggressive. I don't know. Um, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm not a cat. I don't, I, maybe it was him, like, exercising that need. And so then when it came to other times, he was like, I don't need to be aggressive. I've already hunted. I've already killed, <laughs> I've already killed four fake mice today. Nice. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Uh, any last words for us? Um, nothing much. Nothing Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, this is appreciated. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but so I've transitioned to this new show with Rudis. Every Monday, I'm going to have three guests on. So obviously, uh, you know, these are, these are shorter interviews. So I'm going to definitely try to have you on after Pan Ams again. Yes. Probably trials again. So, you know, we might be chatting uh, a few times this year. It'd be cool. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. So, all right, Sarah, we appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Ben. See ya. All right, guys, that was none other than Sarah Hildebrandt. She just came off a big weekend winning the Matelo Pelo Cohen tournament. Um, you heard from her that she's wrestling off two-time world team member Whitney Condor on February 8th. If she wins that one, she's going to be wrestling at the Pan Am the, the Pan Am. the Pan Am Championship Pan Am qualifier, I mean, it couldn't be stupider. You're going to have the same exact tournament. Two weeks in a row uh, at the same location, and, and but they mean different things. Um, so we, we talked about the absurdity of that. So if she beats Whitney Connor, she gets to pick which one of those she goes to. Then she will go to the Olympic team trials, um, at which point she'll maybe make the Olympic team. I mean, we have quite the stacked female uh, female freestyle Olympic team this year. Um, man, I, I feel like, you know, I know Japan has been the incumbent forever. Uh, I feel like that the United States – Women's freestyle, they could challenge for a title this year um, almost for sure. So, obviously, we'll be talking to potentially, hopefully, another member of that team. Uh, Tamira is, uh, she is obviously sitting out till the final Olympic team trials this year. She won Olympic gold last year. She did have a little bump in the road at the rank series tournament, which we will catch up to her with her um, about. And then she spent the day in Rome. So, I, I might even ask about her day in Rome because I, be, I bet. Knowing her, I bet she had a good time. I bet she has some funny stories to tell us. All right, we're going to call Tamira now. All right, what's going on, Tamira? What's up, Ben? Just here in Italy. Yeah, tell, yeah. tell, me, tell me about I told the I told the uh, guests already that you were in Rome today and you had a good time, so I want you to tell us about it. Oh, okay, so first of all, I um, got to go to the Vatican, Ooh. and that was gorgeous. It was amazing. It was it was surreal. Like I'm a religious person, so that was pretty cool to get to go there. And um, I had to choose between going to the Vatican and going to the Colosseum and like oh. the Trevi Fountain and all that. Then why are you gonna make that choice? Because we only had a limited amount of time and uh, it was like 45 minutes one way just driving. Uh, and so it was like, all right, and this uh, a lot of amount of time we need to make this choice. And I'm like, look, I have never been to the Vatican. I've been outside the Coliseum. The, oh, yeah. Okay. I was at the Coliseum. That's got to be pretty outstanding. 
No, it is. It's gorgeous. I went last year um, at our acclimation camp. Okay. When we were here. Yeah. Uh, or not last year. I think two years ago. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. But in the past. <laughs> Yeah, in the past, in the past. And so I was like, yes, let's go to the Vatican. So um, we went to the Vatican. It was gorgeous. Got to see some amazing paintings. I was just taking pictures. It was amazing. It's 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 gorgeous. There's yeah. a lot of history here. And it's freaking, freaking A. Just awesome. So uh, were there groups that went to both places or was it like majority vote? It was groups that went to both places. Okay. So, in my room, there is Ariana and Kayla, and we were like, okay, we are going to go to the Vatican, like, regardless of what everybody's doing. Mm-hmm. And then we found out that Canada was going to the Vatican, and so like we had the bus stop like before okay. they got to the destination, and we, yo, Ben, we had to run to the Vatican. Why? <laughs> because it was going to be closing in 20 minutes, and we were... How how long how far away was it like I don't know oh, we had a ways to oh. go we had a way to go. you're talking to someone like, over there who are you talking to they gotta say hi uh, it's Ariana de la de la Square de la. <laughs> hi how are you special guests on the podcast special guests Ariana <laughs> she was waiting to but, um so but I mean we had to book it and I was in my sketcher heels so I was supposed to be looking cute oh, like I had this nice little dress on and we ran about 15 minutes just to get to make it on time and wow. like Terry Steiner he didn't make it like there was a few people now, that t- Terry is out, out, outstanding runner. are you telling me that you beat Terry and you had heels on in a race yes come yes. on <laughs> not to run stop <laughs> I know, and he's an outstanding runner. Runs like every morning for yes. like an hour straight. Yes. He didn't want to do 15 minutes. Oh my so, goodness. <laughs> yeah, so um, we ended up going and it was gorgeous. So yeah, like we, man, when I made, like we were just dripping sweat by the time we were done, but it was okay. totally worth it. And then we just like well, walked it, around, got great pictures. Is it winter there? How cold is it? Is it warm? It's it's winter now. Like we we had to bring our our winter jackets. And you st- wow. kind of- and still sweat. You must want hard. Okay. Fair yes. Enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. Uh. Like all of us, we were like taking our jackets off. Like we can't keep, keep running. Like Allie, like had to like stop because uh. her shoe tied, and she was like, "Wait, you guys!" And we were like, "We'll wait for you." Oh Mal my had gosh. To drop off. Like since Sarah or not Sarah. Uh, Catherine was like, Sarah, or Catherine and Mal are like, oh, we'll, we'll just go somewhere else. Wow. Like, some people like ended up falling off this train. <laughs> like, wow. just people booking it to the Vatican. So, <laughs> that was an adventure. That was good. So, see, I, 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 listen, I told our listeners that you would have a good Rome story for us, and you did not let them down. You came through uh, just like I, I, I thought you would. <laughs> oh my gosh, why is it always something? <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible but after that it like it died down uh we like went to we we were we made our way to, we were trying to make our way to the palace but that didn't end up happening but like we went to a cool plaza that was kind of secluded not not a lot of tourists so we were like pretty much with the locals mm-hmm. and like there were people yo ben it was weird no i don't know if i'm allowed to say it what you Shit. can say it the the gelato and the guy We'll delete it if it's so bad. Okay, so we we had dinner. It was great. Um, Eight thousand reviews, and the place it was small, cramped. A lot of these um, like Italian restaurants, they're really cramped. So like a couple times, I got my head knocked, and like the lady, the lady was like, "Oh, so sorry, so sorry." It was like hugging me. I was like, "It's fine, it's fine." <laughs> but um, and this was the waitress, so this oh, wasn't wow. like a random like a customer but um so after it was me macy ariana and um kayla and uh so we had dinner then we went to get gelato after we got gelato uh a couple of them wanted to get uh, um some more gelato because they didn't like (laughs) double gelato (laughs) no no no. it was so only me and kayla got the gelato but ariana and macy and ali were like no, nah, we want we want we want better gelato. Like this okay, this this right. wasn't up to par. Double gelato. So we were like, okay. <laughs> so we had to look for. 
<laughs> so, okay, so getting getting to the point, I'm walking around eating my gelato, and Kayla devoured hers. I'm like, what is he doing? Like, I was just like, relax. I like to like take my time. Gelato, so freaking good. The best part of it is the cream. I love gelato. What do you so? What do you mean? The best part is what? The cream. I thought it was all this like gelato is like one thing, just like ice cream, right? Or is there something else yeah, to it? Like I'm ice- missing. No, no, you're right. So you know how I'm so- I kind of combined it. You know, ice cream. You know how some ice cream is kind of icy. Oh, sure, sure. I got you. I got and then, you. like, there's yeah. some that's actually like nice and creamy. Gelato is the best part of ice cream. I <laughs> swear, it's just creamy. It's so. <laughs> It's so good. Oh, man. So, so into the story, we're passing these restaurants looking for this other gelato place. And this guy at the rest- at a restaurant was like, hey, hey, Bella, come over here. And we're like, do you know where this gelato place is? He's like, come in here. Come, come, come. The wow. food is great. And, he, and we're like, no, no, no. We're looking for gelato. And uh, he was like, can I have some of your gelato? And I'm the only one with gelato. And I'm like, what? Me? No. No, no, no. And he's like, please, please, let me taste it from your lips. And I was like, whoa! No, 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 no. And prior to that, I said that I was married. He's like, let me taste your gelato. I'm like, I'm married. I have a husband. He's like, oh, okay. Can I taste it from your lips? And I was like, come on, you guys. Let's go. Omit that from your memories. It didn't happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yes, I'm like these Italian men are not afraid. They're great. They're great. I've heard my wife has told me they're very aggressive. Also, yeah, they they are. They're very aggressive. aggressive. Very aggressive. This story, I have four other you, witnesses. You, you totally should have me too, him. He probably doesn't know what that is in Italy. <laughs> he probably doesn't. He doesn't no idea. Like, I'm like fire, assault, fire. He'd be like, oh, come fire with me. <laughs> blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> just like just rolled with it <laughs> so, so that happened and, All right. um, oh, oh. what else I got this little hat from my little cousin that's cute is that, is that Pokemon no it's not it it's looks- just like a cute little beanie and oh. um oh you press oh wow my, my, my kids it? my kids would love that, that that's outstanding right Bigger kids would love it. So I have a, like a seven-year-old cousin, and I'm like, she would love this. Her favorite color is pink. She loves all things pretty, and she likes playing. So I got that for nice. it, and I bargained. I bargained well for it. I was like, look, I don't have, I don't have any cash. And the guy was like, my friend will take you to ATM. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> <We're doing that. laughs> so I got three pairs of earrings and that hat for like 20 euros, and the guy was trying to sell oh. the hat for 50 and all three of the earrings for 10 euros and I'm like no 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 hold on and <laughs> in America it's five bucks at Walmart don't play with me <laughs> oh wow so, <laughs> did, did they so, know what Walmart is ah I don't think he did but I think it was just my aggressiveness uh, going like no 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 <laughs> I don't think so so, <laughs> so that like you know in a nutshell that's pretty much what happened we had a good time but um, I want to go back tomorrow and try to go to like actually inside the Coliseum cause well, I, how, how, many more, how many more days are you guys in there for Italy one one more day one more day okay cool well, tomorrow is the last day and then we sleep and then 9.55 a.m. Uh, Thursday is when okay. some of our flights are some people leave at six thirty. Yeah, got it. Okay. Hey, uh, that was. I knew you have great stories about Rome, but we do have to talk about some wrestling a little bit. Uh, and you know, this is you know you know in this current podcast uh, that it's only the set, it's only week two, but I actually have three guests, uh, and we only talk for like twelve to fifteen minutes. So you know, we might we you and I might go a little past that. That's fine. Um, I, I already talked to Sarah. Uh, Sarah, we, we, you know what I actually talked about? We talked about how good the women's freestyle Olympic team is going to be. You guys are going to be yeah. stacked. You're going to be stacked. I mean, you have a world medalist at every weight class, likely. Yes, yeah. right? Yeah, it's going to be really like, good. Dang year. Oh, it's going to be a great, great 2020. Great like, 2020. Oh, man. Okay. I'm excited. Let's talk about Mateo Pelicone. You, uh, you had a really stacked bracket. Um, you wrestled a couple of the girls that you wrestled the world championships last year, correct? Like the, um, the blessing girl, she was from Nigeria. You wrestled her, uh, LaRouk was actually someone you lost to two worlds ago. Yes. And you beat her last year. So you had had to beat her again. Um, and then 
You know, I, I I don't know if you want to talk about those matches or you just want to go straight to the finals. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Well, you know, the final, I mean, you kind of handled those girls. I mean, they were competitive, but they I didn't ever feel like you were at risk of losing at all. Um, in the finals, you're up 8-0, and, you know, the girl has a really, I guess I was reading some forums and stuff. They said she's got one of the best gut wrenches in female wrestling. Um, yeah. So I, I guess, how did you feel about that? You kind of... Um, let that one just slip right out of your fingers. <laughs> so, okay, here's the thing, Ben. Yes, she had a good gut wrench, and it was it was kind of awkward for me on how I was defending it. But let me just say, um, Hodge from WCAP, like, he pointed out, and everybody pointed out, like, Terry was like, you weren't even defending it right. When I mean I was defending like this, I was defending like this. And we all know if it's a high gut, you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wasn't there. And if it's like a mid-level gut, you're yep, out yep. here. I, I wasn't doing it. They well, said I was just swimming. Like this. So well, I, was, I was a log. You know what she did? The fir- and the first time, so the referees, they didn't, they didn't let her have it and let her get with it. But the second time they did, it's a tactic. I like, so when you take someone through the first time, you don't let them go all the way flat. You leave them where they're stuck on their arm. And so then yeah. when, you, when you go back that way, the, the bottom person can never get their defense up, right? Because they come over and the arm is stuck there and then they go back. So the first time she does it, the referees say white paddle. And the second time, which I, I thought they were going to go white paddle again, but they actually gave her the two points, which, um, you know, that, that was what then tied it up. And then that, that was kind of the end of it. Um, so next time, make, make adjustments on the gut wrenches. Yeah. Oh, man. I've been... Every day at camp, I have been practicing gut wrench defense every single day. Every single day, we've been going live, Mm -hmm. and I've just been getting a handle on it. And I'm like, I know this. That's the sad part. I know this. But in the match, I just kind of – I got relaxed. Like, you know how you said – Well, yeah, I mean, you were up 8 nothing. It was, you know, yeah, it it can happen. Oh, man, it it can. And I got into a position, I'm like – Oh yeah, I'm good. I'm like, oh snap. She she got me in a wizard seatbelt. Yeah. yeah, you know. Oh, okay, my bad. I'm good. Yeah. Huh. There's a gut in me. Yeah. Ah, I'm not defending the gut right. What's happening? Oh gosh. <laughs> my thought process. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the other the other thing was at the end of the first period, you actually uh got a takedown to uh a leg lace and she ended up kind of with her hands behind her you know where you, you flipped her to where she was like this i thought yeah. they could have went two more points there i really i really thought yeah. they kind of might maybe short changed you on that one yeah there you was a so? few times where i i could have i could have got more points and they probably did short change me like they they want to see me win but they also want to see me like like blatantly like yeah. fight and go like oh oh i guess i that's clearly that's that's clearly too, but the match yeah. should have been over when I actually, well, um, I had a trapped arm gut mm-hmm. on her, yeah. and I went one side, yeah. and then I had to turn the other side hard, and I should have did it again, mm-hmm. but I I I didn't, and yeah. I got lack there. But I mean, you saw Cal Cal Dake's match; yeah. he just he was well, like he, aggressive, and just finished it, and I'm like, I should I should have did yeah. that. I don't know why I didn't, but yeah, learning experience. There was a lot of pressure like going into this tournament. So it was a world champion. Well, it was your first tournament as world champion, correct? Um, no, because I, I went to World Cup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, uh-huh. Yeah, but it was, you know, World Cup is a little bit more lax because yeah. uh-huh. you got the team to, to pick you up. So this tournament, it was a really, like, first individual tournament back, and I had just won the UWW uh, Women's Wrestler of the Year, and I was just like, oh, oh my gosh. gosh, there's a target on my back. <laughs> oh, my gosh, there's so much pressure right now. <laughs> and that that has dissipated. That is no longer no longer there. Uh, mind. Now I'm like I'm gonna f you all up. Now there we, there we go. That's what I want. <laughs> um, okay, last question. Uh, so I don't know the answer is because you're obviously already qualified for the Olympics, the the 68 kilogram for the United States. Um, are you wrestling in Pan Ams? Or are you gonna skip that one and just wrestle at the trials? I'm wrestling championships. Okay, and so you wrestle. So you wrestle there and then the Olympic trials and there's nothing else? Nope. Yeah. After this performance, um, me and Terry had talked and we're like, you you need to get back. Yeah. yeah. You need to get back on it. And I was like, you're right. I want to. Let's go. Yeah. So. Awesome. I'm going to go champion. Well, 
Okay. Well, cool. Man, Tamir, you make my job so easy because I just say go and then boom, you talk. It's fantastic. I appreciate it. Um, and you have a great day tomorrow at the Coliseum. And hopefully, maybe, maybe if we – so now, right, this is – I'm doing three guests every single Monday. So I'm, I, you know I'm going to call you back because you're a great guest. So we will talk, I'm sure, a few times this year. Oh, yay. That would be awesome. That's, I'm excited for that, Ben. All right. I, I appreciate it. You guys have uh, a good night, and we will talk to you later. Night-night. Bye, Ben. All right, guys. That was Tamir Mensa. She is in Rome. I, I told you guys she was going to have a good story from Rome. And she went, man, she went about 10 minutes on that story. Um, we got a little bit of wrestling out of her. So that was fun. We'll have her on. She's an awesome guest. Great personality. All right. Our last guest of the day is going to be none other than number one ranked uh, Luke Pletcher from Ohio State. So let's bring him on now. All right, what's up, Luke Fletcher? The first thing I noticed is you have a, a Traub train shirt on. So are, are you a Gas Tank Gary fan then, I'm guessing? Through and through. Okay. Who made those shirts? His dad. <laughs> that's, yeah. all, oh, that, that's so funny. Yeah, he just passes them out at the duels. Uh, so how many different versions are there? Cause I think I thought I saw one that said Gas Tank Gary, right? Isn't there one yeah, of those? Yeah, mine's got... Mine's got gas tank on the back. Oh, fantastic! But, uh, yeah, this is the this is the first version. I think all of them just have gas tank Gary on the front now. Okay, okay, wow, that, that's yeah. funny. I, I love it. Um, okay, so you and I've never talked before. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I guess listen, I'm just gonna start with the thing I'm most interested in, and that's you. Know, you've always been a really consistent guy. You went fourth and fifth at the NCAA championships, and then this year. I just feel like it's something different. I feel like you t went to a whole other level. I mean, uh, I watched you and Tristan Moran last week, and Tristan's a guy I help out with. And I didn't feel like Tristan did anything wrong. I felt like you just wrestled freaking outstanding. And, and then as I watch other matches, that's what I feel. So what what's flipped the switch for you this year? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm just okay. I'm just hand fight. I I think probably the thing I'm focused on the most is just bringing a, a hard hand fight okay. just the whole the whole time yeah um i've always felt like my reattacks were were good mm -hmm. but i've never really yeah. got to use them i okay. guess yeah, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm trying to like you know get that first takedown quick and uh just just beat them up for the most part and force them to take bad shots and uh yeah just just put the pressure on it but other other than that i really not too much i'm just having fun i okay. guess just just trying to put just put the pressure on them yeah, I would say your reattacks are really good. Uh, you, you, you have both. I, I call it good down block, go behinds, and then good reshots on on both. I would say. Um, mm -hmm. how, so how about this? Uh, you know, I I, I don't want to say you were an uh, underclassman or a younger guy, but you know, obviously you've had Joey McKenna around you. Logan Steber was competitive during your time there. Um, now you, I feel like you're the senior. You're kind of the leader on the team. How, how's that role for you? You like it? You hate it? Somewhere in the middle. I like it. I like it a lot. I think. I think that helps a little bit for me as well, yeah. selfishly. Okay. Um, you know, it's just like in the in the practice room, I guess, <clears throat> where it was easier. Not that I did it often, but sometimes you were able to, you know, take that easy go. Okay. And take it, get a breather. But now it's almost like you have an obligation to, to try to punish everybody. So <laughs> the the, the, pra the practice room is just more and more brutal. Uh huh. But um. Yeah, I think it's cool. It's it's something different. Um, I've tried to just model the way my whole time that I've been here. So okay. that that aspect really hasn't changed. But yeah, just trying to help out the younger guys, and you know, it's it's cool because yeah, we're we're a pretty young team, and for a lot of the guys, they haven't traveled and done the Big Ten schedule mm -hmm. and all that. So it's it's a lot of fun. Okay, cool. So um, <laughs> it, it, you grew up in Young Guns, correct? Uh, young Guns, All American. And, okay. Uh, Pitbull, yeah. So, oh dang, you did you did all of them, huh? Yeah, we Everything. for the most part we all, um, we we end a lot of them ended with young guns, but we started with um, Pitbull, which was uh, Coach Sonny, Sonny yep. Abe, mm -hmm. and we did that until we were like eight or nine. Then we all went to Coach Waller's. Wait, we so like who's 15. who's all? I'm I'm guessing you mean Spencer, <laughs> Gavin, maybe that that group of kids that yeah, know. for the most part, yeah, okay. like the the group that. I graduated with, and the year before me was like Kemmer, Vincenzo, mm -hmm. uh, Maruka Shields, yeah. uh, Krivis. 
you know, that whole, that yeah. whole group that came from Western Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. So we've been training together since we've been seven or eight no matter where we what club we were at we were always together for the most yeah. part and then and then all americans obviously that's uh robbie waller uh yep. and that's in your hometown you're from latrobe correct yeah so i i i tr- trained with him until i graduated high school i went to young guns here and there just to get get looks you know okay some different guys but yeah for the most part i stuck with waller Okay, yeah, I, I've been out to Young Guns for the camps in the summer. I love Jody Stripmotter and John. They're, they're yeah, they're great guys. Yeah, they're, they're just and they, they they just get it right. There's just some guys who have a. I don't want to say I don't know if easier time is the way to put it, but they they connect with the kids really well. I feel like they have just great relationships. Is that am I right yeah. on that one? Yeah, they're good. They uh they preach they preach the right things too. It's not just like the wrestling. They they try to make you good people too, which is great. Yeah, yeah, and they are they are good people, so I guess <clears throat> no surprise there. Um, okay, so you got a few big duels coming up. Uh, you know, Max Murin. Uh, I will shoot. Did you grow up with him too? Yep. Oh I my god, him young guys too. Yeah, <laughs> too many Pennsylvania guys. Get them out of yep. here. Uh, so that is how many weeks away is that? One week, two weeks. We wrestled them on Friday. Okay, Friday night. So this week, um, yep. you know. What are you thinking about that matchup? He's all the way up to rank number three, which is kind of the highest that he's been ranked this year. Uh, how do you feel about that matchup coming up on Friday night? Uh, I'm excited. I think it's going to be well, Iowa in general. Their their hand fights hard, so I'm excited yeah. to see what see what they do. Um, <clears throat> see how that is. But I think uh, just continue what I'm doing. Uh, for now, it's a uh, testing period for for the most part until we get to Big Tens. I like I just like getting my hands on people. Yeah, I feel like the the more I wrestle them, the better it is for me, because I I can I feel like I can make adjustments pretty well. Nice. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm just excited to get my hands on him. I haven't wrestled him since probably like sophomore, maybe junior year of high school. So oh it's really? Been a while. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. And he was he was young when I wrestled him. So yeah, I'm excited. That be, that's gonna be a fun one. Okay. So then, then, and then right after that, you follow up Minnesota, which you wrestled. Yeah. You wrestled Mitch McKee at the Vegas. You had uh, you know ten six win, fairly mm-hmm. controlling over him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you go Chad Red, and then you go Nick Lee. So you're going to kind of run the gauntlet here the next four weeks. That, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, which of those matches after Murin are you most looking forward to? Well, um, who you got? Who, I, who, I, who you got the most heat with? I don't have heat with anybody, but obviously <laughs> you should have some heat. I love heat. Come on, I'm, I don't. I don't have heat. I don't have. I don't really have too much hate for anybody. Damn. Um, <laughs> but uh i mean obviously nick lee's the big one i'm not looking not looking over anybody obviously yeah i'm excited to wrestle them all but i'm not gonna lie to you say that nick lee isn't the person i'm thinking about yeah because you have you you have not wrestled him in your high, in your college career correct because you were 41 nope. in the beginning and then he wasn't wrestling and then 33 33 and now you're back up correct so you, you've never have you ever wrestled him in high school either no i think we wrestled along like when we were young, young, but I don't uh, even know. Oh, Pee Wee's okay. So that, yeah. that, yeah, that's a match I'm looking forward to. Something that we we haven't seen, and I, I think it's uh, it's gonna be a good ca- contrast in styles because he's longer. He shoots a lot. Your reattacks are really good, like like you said already. Um, yep. Yeah, that that's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so uh, you know I don't want to look past anything, but I guess I was just asking some people yesterday if you're gonna compete in freestyle after this. That's something, that's something you've done a whole bunch of. Is that something you're planning on doing past? Uh, your senior year of college here? Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna wrestle for at least the cycle, I would say. Just I mean, I love wrestling. Yes. Um my body's pretty healthy for the most part. Obviously okay. we're getting to the, the back half of the season. We got some bumps and bruises, but yeah. I've never really knock on wood, I haven't had too much injury. So yeah, I don't see why not. Nice. Okay, cool. Um all right. Any anything else you wanna tell us uh, about the the last what we got? Two months of your college career? I, I got nothing. You got Just, nothing. Uh, uh, go go Bucks. That's all I got. Okay. Go Bucks. So you guys got I just say Iowa this Friday. You got Minnesota Sunday and then you have Penn State uh February sometime next month. So you guys Yeah, we got yeah, we got Nebraska in there, Maryland and Northwestern. So we okay. got we got some goals coming. Awesome. All right. Thanks for taking the time for us, Luke. We appreciate it and uh we'll see you this Friday. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Peace. All right, guys, you heard that was Luke Pletcher. He has an outstanding schedule that he's going to be wrestling the next, oh, what is it? Um, We'd say uh, three weeks. So he's going to have uh, Mitch McKee. He's going to have Chad Red. He's going to have Nick Lee. He's going to have Max Muir. That that is a stacked schedule. Um, 
So we talked to Sarah Hildebrand, Tamira Mensa, Luke Fletcher today. That was that was fun for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And we will be back next week. Peace.